Hey, real quick, I just wanted to let you know that you are listening to the best veteran army podcast of 2022, according to the Broken Jarhead platform. The reason why I was voted the best is because of you. So thank you so much for voting, for listening, for subscribing, and for sharing with all your friends and family. Just make sure you keep on doing it, and I will keep on putting out some awesome content for you. All right, today I want to do an episode on the Liver King. Why? Because he's freaking fascinating, and it is blowing up the internet right now. So stay tuned. Find out how eating prairie oysters and raw liver will get you jacked. Welcome to the Hard to Kill podcast. The go-to podcast for military, LEO, and EMS professionals. Sharing ideas and experiences from around the world to make you hard to kill. Here's your host, Dave Morrow. All jokes aside, uh, thanks for tuning in to the show today. This is an episode that I'm doing because you wanted it. And I posted it on my Hard to Kill Instagram account. So if you're not following, head to the Hard to Kill podcast on Instagram. Make sure to follow. And uh, you'll be able to contribute to uh, new episodes like this in the future. So I was already tracking this because obviously being in the health and fitness space, and especially working with men, I think I'd be remiss not to be covering this. And I just wanted to learn a little bit more because the Liver King wasn't somebody that I was actually following on YouTube or on Instagram, other than the fact that he would pop up in my feed. And I just dismissed him as another influencer that probably had an interesting message. And for me, it was just another one in the sea of influencers that are in there. But now that it's come out in the wash that he's been using performance enhancing drugs, which I know everybody's on the bandwagon like, oh, I knew it. That was obvious. Yeah, I I mean, <laughs> I didn't know his full story, but by looking at his physique, it seemed pretty obvious that he was using performance enhancing drugs. So we're going to get into that a little bit more today. But before we do, I want to thank and send some positive vibes over the airwaves to those that are writing, commenting, reviewing the Hard to Kill podcast. And I want to just give some shout outs to those in the community. So got a new rating from Chase 80 and Gracie and me and RJC, which are freaking awesome. I really appreciate them, guys. So thanks so much for rating the podcast. Uh, Chase, who uh, was actually just on the podcast, uh, will be, I guess, one of the new episodes. Not I guess, but it'll be one of the new episodes come January season five. And the lineup for season five is already freaking fire. So stay tuned. If you're not already subscribing, make sure to subscribe to the podcast because we're going to have some massive, massive guests. Namely, uh, Ben Azadi is going to be on. If you're not tracking him, he is a keto diet superstar. And there's just tons more that are going to be on the podcast too, talking about fitness, health, and nutrition. Additionally, this is going to be the last episode I do before Christmas. And I won't be doing any new guest episodes until after the break. So come January, we got a bunch in the can and that's just so I can reset, rejig and uh, come back refreshed. But you will be hearing episodes. There are previously recorded episodes that I've done on other people's podcasts. I thought you might like listening to and help promote their podcasts as well. So stay tuned for those. So you will not be without your <laughs> hard to kill podcast fix during the Christmas break. Um, 2023, I think is going to be a really interesting year. We're going to be doing a lot more content. We're going to be looking for input like we're doing right here for the podcast and doing a lot more to interact with you, the listener, so that we can hit all the topics that you're currently curious about and make you the hardest to kill community out there okay so that's it on that front let's get right into i guess some news uh guys i've been kind of blown away by a few things that are going on right now last week just last week i don't know if you're tracking but there was a cold fusion discovery breakthrough if you're not tracking what cold fusion is it's creating a fusion reaction like what happens in the center of the sun but without the sun. So these typically happen in nuclear explosions. They're able to do it now with a bunch of lasers refracting off each other and 
they were able to get more energy out than they put into the system. Let that sink in for a little bit. If this is a thing, we have free energy for the remainder of humanity's time on Earth. So who are the evil forces that are going to start getting their dirty little hands on it? I don't know. I don't know. But this is uh, wild. Will we have fusion energy in our lifetimes? If we do, wow. (laughs) Holy crap balls. Free energy, essentially. But will it be free? I don't know. We'll have to see about that. And then chat GPT. If you check this out, it's an AI bot, essentially, that you can type anything into. So I've been loading up things like, hey, write me a strength and conditioning program for somebody who wants to join the Navy SEALs. I'm like, there's no way he's going to get this. I'm calling him he already. Holy shit. (laughs) The the robots are taking over. I'm assuming he's a he for whatever reason. And it, it pumped out a really good like standard training program that wasn't like crazy generic, like go for a run, do some put. No, it was, it had swimming in there. I'll have to post it. I'll have to post it. Cause I was like, wow, that's, that's insane. It wrote a speech for me. It wrote a business pitch. I just went nuts for like an hour, just asking it a million different questions and it pumping out really interesting answers. So the robots are here, man. The AI is here. If this is the future, like this is just scratching the surface. I was talking to a guy yesterday who knows people that are on the corporate version, so the paid version, the enterprise version of the chat GPT function uh, or app, or I don't, I don't know what you even want to call it now, but he's like, it's it's cuckoo bananas. Like the one that we have access to is just a fraction of what it's able to do. Wow. that's That's been on my mind last week. I thought I'd point, if you're not tracking, point you in that direction just to have some interesting news in your feed that's not all doom and gloom. Okay, so let's get it right into it. The Liver King. What the hell is going on there? Uh, so if you're not tracking who this is, the Liver King is actually Brian Johnson. He's just a regular dude. And his social media following just exploded over like the last two years or so uh, because uh, before that he was a CrossFitter, very fit human being, uh, his older videos were just, you know, showing what he can do. And like, he is definitely within the 1% of physically fit human beings. So can't take that away from him. Um, he's known for promoting what he calls an ancestral lifestyle, which includes eating large amounts of raw organs and meat. So a lot of his videos show him eating bull testicles, raw liver, raw steaks, fish eggs, eggs, And this is what he covers in part of his like ancestral eating dogma or plan, if you want to call it. So his diet has been criticized by nutritionists, and I'm taking this from Wikipedia, guys, for being potentially dangerous. Okay. After he repeatedly denied ever using anabolic steroids to attain his physique, it was revealed he regularly used multiple performance enhancing drugs. Yep. So... If you don't know who this is, go Google him right now. Type in Liver King. Hey, real quick, if you're a repeat listener to the podcast and you really enjoy the content that is being put out on the airwaves here, I'd really appreciate if you go and leave a rating and a review on your favorite podcast app. Every time you do so, it allows somebody else to find this podcast, find it in their search feature, and potentially change their lives forever by listening to some of the best experts on the planet on fitness, health, and nutrition. So do your 10 seconds of altruistic behavior today and go leave a review and a comment and I will love you forever. Peace. Just look at his physique. Now, he is a 44-year-old man. Anybody that's spent any time in the gym or has any kind of grip of what bodies are supposed to look like and, and what bodies that are on gear might look like, um, <laughs> it's kind of hard to believe that you got that physique just from liver and uh, eating ancestrally. Like the videos before and the pictures of him before, he was a fit, strong dude. I would love to have his physique, but he took it to the next level. Okay, so what Johnson, so Brian Johnson, the liver king, he preaches is the nine ancestral tenets, like I mentioned before. So what are they? The nine ancestral ancestral tenets are sleep, eat move, shield, connect, 
cold sun struggle bond. Okay, so uh, he sells a bunch of different stuff. He's the quintessential entrepreneur. So I'm on ancestralsupplements.com, which is his main hustle. He sells supplements. So this whole, I guess, marketing machine that he created is to sell these supplements. So the goal is to get you convinced that, oh, man, I need to have more liver. I need to have more organ meats. I need to have all these things in my diet, and I will achieve some semblance of the liver king, right? And that's kind of how the fitness industry, and that's how I make a living. Do you want results like this? Cool. Do this thing that I'm selling. Pretty basic stuff, right? Uh, So let's go over the nine ancestral tenets. And I'll just go over them briefly here. They have them on the website. Uh, The first is sleep like a rock. Very similar to what I talk about. I say sleep or die. Same thing. The human organism is highly adapted to, to a sleep environment that no longer exists. Our ancestors slept directly on the ground. We were never meant to be disconnected from the electrons of the earth and certainly were not meant to sleep on a pillow top mattresses. Um, I don't know. Maybe. I, I, so this, this also plays into like paleo romanticism. I don't know, man. <laughs> like if you reduce this down further and further and further, he, he's been known to just sleep on the ground. He doesn't have a bad, maybe he does. Like if he lied about taking performance enhancing drugs, he probably lies about sleeping on the floor all the time. Just saying. And I like my bed. I freaking love my pillow. (laughs) Like I'm soft now, man. I'm 41 years old. I'm a dad. When I go to bed, I don't want to be all uncomfortable on the floor. I have slept on the floor. It actually helps when my back is bad. But I live in Montreal. I what am I supposed to go sleep outside in the backyard now? Is that paleo? Like how far do we go with the paleo thing? Do we go live in a cave? So that's kind of like paleo romanticism, right? But I do agree with them in the sense that we need to sleep better. Okay. So moving on to the next one, eat like our ancestors. Many people in the modern world look to targeted support for their chronic health conditions while neglecting the very fundamental nourishment that governs our biology, health, and well-being. Think root cause. Root cause is almost always nutrient deficiencies. I agree. Hands down. Yeah, yeah. We eat like dog shit. The last video that I did was all on polyunsaturated fatty acids and just consuming way too much of the omega-6 fatty acid without any omega-3 because our food is just full of omega-6 which isn't the way we're supposed to be eating. Okay, cool. I'm tracking on that. Next one is uh, move like your ancestors. Modern Americans spend an average of 13 hours a day sitting down and eight hours for sleep, and that's 21 total hours hours a day spent in sedentary state. Uh, Agreed, 100%. And so I've got the 30 to lean program, gets you out for at least 20 minutes. Like the bare minimum, like congratulations, like you're doing the bare minimum is 20 minutes of just walking every day. It doesn't have to be CrossFit, but you should be doing more. You should be doing more. Absolutely. Our bodies are designed for it. But 13 hours is roughly what most Americans, North Americans do per day, which is sitting at work, at home, whatever, not actually moving. It's causing problems. So I agree with them wholeheartedly on that one. Shield from dangers. While our early ancestors had to shield against lions, hostile tribes, and treacherous weather, in the modern world, we must shield against even more insidious dangers. Top of this list are xenoestrogens, like phthalates, BPAs, alkaphenols, and PCBs. They are everywhere from our food, water, clothes, and plastics. They wreak havoc on our hormones and are scientifically linked to the decline in fertility in recent decades. Um, yeah, I mean, that is a that is a concern. It's a concern of mine. Uh, actually, just recently, I, I even switched my toothpaste out. I'm slowly switching my grooming products like uh, soaps and stuff to uh, ones that are more hormone friendly. So uh, Bravo Sierra, great veteran run company down in the States. I'm switching to their products. Uh, They were at uh, the Mike conference in in Vegas and I I love their stuff. So I'm switching over completely to them Um, just because there's, there's, there's definitely some, there's something there. There's something there for sure. So this, like the, (laughs) the soaps and stuff that you're literally putting on your balls that help control your testosterone levels. Yeah, you should probably be a little bit concerned that you want to have something that is cleaning your balls, not driving your testosterone levels down. So uh, these phthalates, BPAs, et cetera, they're, uh, 
they're ubiquitous. They're everywhere. Um, and I'm trying to get rid of them just in my daily life. And this is something that he's talking about as well. There is evidence that, you know, there's the xenoestrogens, which are, you know, mostly found in, pl in plastic products, uh, but they're in um, not only uh, plastics, but they're in, uh, for, uh, not fertilizers, but um, pesticides. They can be causing some serious damage too. And we eat a ton of stuff that's covered in pesticides, right? So that could be a serious concern as well. So I don't think that declined testosterone is a, is a single variable. It's, it's a multivariate multivariable issue and that's just one of them that i'm tracking so he's been known to like part of you know sleeping on the floors to eliminate the xenoestrogens and the other compounds that are um, found in pillows as fire retardants from entering into his bloodstream whether or not it's in high enough concentration to do anything from your pillow i don't know but you know food for thought connect to the earth we believe that connecting with nature in all its forms can be the best medicine of all our early ancestors were in constant contact with nature like the fertile ground we once walked upon we were a natural extension of the earth okay uh cool i i don't know the research on this uh, like to literally be connected with your feet and like on the grass kind of thing it's something that it's curious when i came back from afghanistan one of the things i was compelled to do was to go to the park that wasn't far from uh, my parents place and just like lie in the grass because it, the, if you've been to Afghanistan there's like no grass right there's no I mean we're walking around in the dust all day but it just felt like something I had to do it was like hot it was middle of summer and it just felt good I love putting my feet in the grass maybe you do too is there something there in, ancestrally that's part of our species that we need to do that I don't know I mean we're talking about electrons and it sounds very esoteric which I'm definitely a fan of but is there actually something there no idea. Don't know if that actually helps, but definitely walking barefoot does have benefits just for your arch, for your ability to uh, have a lot more tension and strengthen your calf muscles. Use those calf muscles better. I even barefoot run on the grass uh, during the summer when I can to help strengthen my uh, my soft tissue. Great way to, to prepare for any distance runs. Uh, I have a lot of my clients try to do it as well so that they can just develop the strength, especially in the calf and the Achilles area that's uh, underdeveloped because of running shoes. So something probably there. I'm not really tracking the earthing movement, but it might be something that uh, has some merit. And then get cold. Like all mammals, I love this one. Our DNA evolved with cold. We're purpose built for it. In the modern world, though, we're rarely subjected to cold temperatures for any real duration. Yeah, this is something that I started tracking because of Wim Hof. I want to get some guys on the podcast to talk about it too, because cold showers is something that I, I do regularly and I've never done a ice bath cold plunge. The closest I've got to is at the spa. I know I'm fancy hop in the cold bath after hitting the sauna or one of the, the cold hot cycles. I think it's great. I love getting in them. I love more the feeling that I have after which is just like a endorphin rush. And I had a cool conversation um, with Ben Smith, who's a personal trainer, army veteran, who said basically like cold blast, cold blast, cold baths uh, saved his life. Like it just, it sorted out his central nervous system and uh, he became a better human being because of it. So there's, there's some, there's something there. There's something there to it for sure. So I definitely agree with that one. I think it's great. Definitely uh, start practicing today. If you haven't done it before, just switch your, shower to cold for a few seconds and switch it back to hot and go back and forth until you get cold adapted. And then you can go a little bit longer. Uh, definitely has some benefits for the, the, um, the body and your cells long-term. Uh, seven is get sun, magnesium, fat soluble activators. We're taught in the modern world to f world to fear the source of all life on earth, our sun. How crazy is that? Many people think we should avoid it or worse, obstruct it with cancer causing hormone disrupting sunscreens. Yeah, that's something I've been talking about too, actually. Uh, I, I avoid sunscreen, to be honest. Uh, I'll, I'll take a little bit of the burn uh, at the outset. And the funny thing is uh, when I switched to a keto-based diet, I was out in the sun all summer and I never burned. I never put on sunscreen. I was doing three, four, five-hour training sessions and uh, I was fine. I was fine. So... Uh, I don't know what the research is on that, but uh, definitely curious uh, to know. And the sunscreen doesn't prevent cancer. It's like the, it, the the research is so foggy and not clear because they cannot get a, a a consensus around whether or not it prevents cancer. It prevents sunburns, but ultimately what you're trying to do is prevent cancer. The 
chemicals in the sunscreens, some of them are carcinogenic. So where does that leave us? Um, you know, I, 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 I avoid using it as much as possible. Um, if I do use it, it's to prevent a burn. But once your, my skin is conditioned to, you know, and it's tanned, I don't burn anymore, even though I'm pasty Irish. I, <laughs> I, do, I do all right. I think there's something there to that. Uh, and when you put on sunscreen, it, it, it prevents the ability for the UV radiation to help you create more vitamin D, which is really important. So uh, I think there's something there to that as well. Um, you need like 60 minutes of sunlight on exposed skin to get enough vitamin D. And typically, you need to be a little bit sweaty because it's fat soluble, but that's a whole other discussion. Number eight is struggle, fight, win. Nature is designed in such a way uh, that too much comfort is not good for the organism. Weaknesses are created over time and eventually exposed when the harsh elements arrive. It's our rite of passage as a living creature on this earth to struggle. So dig in and embrace it. Amen to that, man. You know, like you got to struggle. And that's the only way that you're going to grow. I mean, case in point, like my finger is a freaking disaster. I don't know if you can see that <laughs> from yesterday's jujitsu session. Like some 28 year old young buck just like folded me and just jammed my finger. Like, I don't know where it ended up. I was grabbing onto his belt and he just rolled a different way. And it was just like pop, pop, pop. And I was like, ah, crap. Don't think it's broken, but the struggle is real, man. And I put myself in that situation, that white belt struggle situation, you know, on purpose because what struggle do I have during the day? <laughs> you know, like everything's temperature controlled. I can get, go get food from the grocery store right now. If I want, I can get water. I can get anything I want. I can or, order something from Amazon. There's no struggle there, but we're meant to struggle. We're meant to fight. We're meant to overcome. And when you don't have it, I think that's one of the main reasons why we're suffering psychologically as a, as a community, as a tribe, as a, society it's definitely get out there find something that's hard weightlifting is one thing it's hard it's it hurts it sucks struggle but you get stronger at the end same thing applies it doesn't have to be jujitsu jujitsu it can be anything just find your struggle i i agree with him he's got a 2000 what 230 pound barbarian challenge which is like his his feat of strength that's cool man that's very cool and uh, lastly, bond with your tribe. Since the inception of our species, we belong to a far greater purpose. Our tribe, for nearly for our early ancestors, purpose was protecting and providing for the tribe, risking life and limb to guard the perimeter and raising the next generation to do the same. Yep. Just like Sebastian Younger, my guy's book behind me, uh, tribe is one of the main drivers of uh, psychological health and emotional health. And it's one of the things that is sorely lacking in the veteran community when we get back, especially from tour. And one of the reasons why we want to go back on tour because we don't have it here. It sucks. <laughs> it's really hard here. You don't have the same kind of tribe. Even if you have a family, it's close, but it's not quite the same. So definitely find that tribe. Okay, so gone over his ancestral tenets here. That's cool. Now uh, let's look a little deeper as to uh, what the hell happened. Um, and and like, how do you get to where he is now? Uh, like I said earlier, he's a smart dude. He, uh, he has a degree in biochem. He was accepted in med school and then he dropped out to start a business. He started a dentistry, vertically integrated dentistry business with his wife, who's a dentist. Uh, they made a bunch of money off that, sold it. And then he got into like the whole liver King thing. He's uh, partnered up with Paul Saladino, who's a great fitness influencer as well uh, in like the, you want to call it the ancestral health, health type movement. Uh, who's uh, got a lot of good resources that I follow and I track and he's, um, somebody that I, I trust his opinion. Uh, they created a supplement uh, brand together as well. And so uh, for what it's worth, like the Liver King is involved in this like new ancestral health type movement and they're selling products and that's fine. That's capitalism 101. Um, but what seemed to happen is that it just fell off the rails because he he's he seems like a very Machiavellian dude, like the ends justify the means. Um, and so because of that, like he's seems to be filthy rich by the estimations here he uh his net worth is like 12 million dollars but it's probably a lot more than that um he's got a bunch of different companies so he's got uh the the liver king brand which is like obviously you know views and stuff like that on youtube he's got hundreds of thousands of views uh viewers or subscribers on youtube instagram you name it so you can monetize that but he's also got uh four companies medicine man plant company 
ancestral supplements that we just talked about, uh, Heart and Soil, which the company has with Paul Saladino, uh, the fittest. And then he's got real estate. Like he's a genuine, legit businessman and he's smart. So he's been able to leverage his you know, intelligence and his knowledge of business to do pretty well for himself. So with that being said, like, you know, there's some quotes here, like from him on business. I'm a builder of businesses. I'm an evolutionary hunter. I'm that guy that leave the fucking comfort of the cave to take real fucking risk. Another quote is, so this is how I make my money. I own the companies that are downstream and upstream from each other. So he believes in like vertical integration. So you can see like, he's got a very good business background. So it stands to reason that he created this whole persona, right? So he probably had a very strong team behind him and they were able to create this image because if you look at his older videos and I I suggest you do like his voice isn't even the same. And the way I see him is he, he's a WWE character. He's acting, he is taking on this persona because he is the liver King and he talks differently. And he, he sounds like, a variation of like the Hulk Hogan and like Macho Man and these guys because he's got certain things to say. He's got a cadence and he's got uh, an audience that listens to him. And so what that brings us to is, okay, so he got exposed for using performance enhancing drugs because he said from the start that, no, I don't take performance enhancing drugs. I don't take any testosterone replacement because he said his nine ancestral tenants is what gets him here eating things like raw liver and eating bull testicles and stuff was why he was so jacked. But his vascularity, his striations, like it's just for a 44 year old guy, that is crazy hard to achieve. So he got exposed on uh, Derek's more plates, more dates, YouTube channel. Who's a a really good reference. I I actually watch his uh, channel, uh, before all of this and uh he's canadian apparently from vancouver shout out to uh canadian influencers um now he had some emails that he got his hands on and long story short essentially it went over the the liver king's entire protocol monthly protocol and just as a snippet as to like what his monthly protocol looked like um he had a steroid cycle that includes Ibutamorin, Omnitrope, Deca, Testosterone, and Winstrol, to name a few, with a monthly fee exceeding $11,000 US. Wow. <laughs> that's, a, that's a lot of juice. So uh, once I got exposed, I mean, he, he, had, he didn't have a leg to stand on, right? Um, he built something upon being like natural, being natty, but clearly he wasn't. Um, there was actually a UFC um, fighter, Eddie Alvarez, who uh, was part of exposing all this too. Um, and before we get into the the apology video, just to give an idea of like his concentrations of what he's consuming. Liver King's actual tenants have been exposed. It's actually IGF one LR, so that's insulin like growth factor. CJC with IMAP. I'm not quite sure what that is. I'm, you, you guys are listening that are more dialed into this community uh, you can definitely comment and uh educate me on this a little bit more um then uh testosterone sip 0.6 cc's per week deca 0.6 cc's per week and winstrol 50 milligrams per day from what i understand that is a hell of a lot <laughs> it's just at face value that's a hell of a lot uh any of you guys that have ever gone on cycles like this you could probably comment and, and let me me know and let the community know a little bit more uh, as to like how much this actually is um, because $11,000 a month is, is not a normal uh, budget for most dudes. Right. So, um, and the pictures here are just like insane, right? The guy is freaking, he's a WWE star. That's what he is. He's a Marvel action hero. Okay. So his actual video of him apologizing, I'll play a little bit of it here. And then uh, I have some comments. Primals, I'm making this video to apologize because I fucked up, because I'm embarrassed and ashamed, because I lied and I misled a lot of people. I've stated that this is a complicated as fuck topic, at least to me it is, because before social media, I was rich and anonymous, and after social media, I'm still rich but no longer anonymous. And I never expected this kind of exposure in the public eye. 
Okay, something seems off. I mean, I'm no uh, CIA analyst or grid interrogations. I did a basic course before deploying. I also work with teenage children as a high school teacher for a long time and have children of my own. You, you get a little bit long in the twos. You start being able to recognize when people are kind of bullshitting, right? And anybody that's served a day of life in the forces, your bullshit meter kind of goes off a lot faster than I think most people. Something's off here. And I don't know if you can notice it as well, but when you're apologizing, typically, I don't know, talking about myself right off the bat, saying I'm filthy rich, uh, saying how fucked up the situation is, uh, and then not realizing he was going to get a lot of exposure from doing all this. Well, then why did you do all this? Obviously, you knew you were going to get a lot of exposure. So that's just my two cents there. It's been tricky as fuck to navigate. Well, clearly I did it wrong. And I'm here now to set the record straight. Yes, I've done steroids. And yes, I am on steroids, monitored and managed by a trained hormone clinician. Liver King, the public figure, was an experiment to spread the message, to bring awareness to the 4,000 people a day who kill themselves. The 80,000 people a day that try to kill themselves are people are hurting at record rates with depression, autoimmune, anxiety, infertility, low ambition in life. Our young men are hurting the most, feeling lost, weak, and submissive. So I made it my job to model, teach, and preach a simple, elegant solution called ancestral living, the nine ancestral tenants, so our people no longer have to suffer, so we can collectively express our highest and most dominant form. This is my fight. This is why I exist. Um, I think that's a great message. I don't know why you had to go down the TRT route or use any sort of performance enhancing drugs. I don't know why you couldn't have just stuck to that message. My message isn't that far off. I'm sick of seeing our fellow warriors take their lives. One of the number one causes of death for young men in North America is suicide. He's not wrong on that front, but the way that he went about it was disingenuous. So his whole message gets lost in the sauce then. And that's unfortunate because I think we do have a problem. And if he were to have just been honest, people would have still recognized that he's really fit and he's doing something differently and he's has a half decent call to action. So that's, I'll, I'll stop the video there. Um, I, I wasn't quite aware that that was his his main objective just from his website and, and reading his material before. I didn't know he was so passionate about uh, ending the, the suicide epidemic. Uh, so I don't know. Is, is that genuine or not? Uh, now that we know that he uh, is not totally honest about things, uh, what's like? how are we supposed to know? How are we supposed to know if his... Uh, his message is actually genuine here in his apology. It doesn't seem like it. It seems like he's rehearsed it numerous times and uh, it comes off as, uh, as phony. So that's just my take on it. So where do we go from here? Right. Um, at least he's come out and apologized. Okay, cool. Do it on him. Right. Uh, he's actually gotten more followers now. Like this video has millions of views now. All right. So where does this go? He's been on a ton of different podcasts since being exposed he's been on uh, anthony pompliano's podcast he's been on flagrant like he's doing the tour i know he's trying to, rogan was saying he was trying to get on rogan too but rogan's like well you're a liar what are, you, what are we going to talk about so was that part of his plan all along who knows obviously he's smart and obviously he has a really good business sense about him is he getting more exposure now and was that always the plan um and all this is just smoke and mirrors that's why i find this so interesting right he's got a really important message now but that whole message has been muddled by being dishonest so like does it even matter anymore i don't know i don't know um but i think that brings us to i think the the, the greater question and um with respects to when we talk about suicide but also like men's health and when it comes to let's say testosterone right and hormonal health that's something that i promote in my beast program because i think it's one of the one of the main issues that is plaguing, especially guys that are a little bit older, right? And we see that testosterone levels are plummeting. And 
the reason why isn't fully understood. There's a bunch of different factors that could be at play, but is there any just one that can that can be like the silver bullet? Likely not, right? Um, so I wanted to uh, just highlight that as a as a topic of interest. I think most men don't want to talk about testosterone. I think we always, always want to like go to the doctor and talk about cholesterol and making sure our hearts are working well, but it's all, it's all part of the same system. We need to have good hormonal health and testosterone is one of those things that needs to be adequate in order to be just healthy across the board, including heart health, including psychological health, including just general wellness and well being and being focused and dialed in. So I got my testosterone levels checked. Now, the question I'll ask you is, do you know yours? doesn't matter if you're, you know, in your twenties, likely it's pretty high or forties, fifties, sixties, you should know generally where you're at because it's a great overall indicator of your overall health. So I got mine done. And I'm going to share with you because I said I would um, in the comments here and uh, to start a discussion. So let's just take a look at where my testosterone levels are at. And I'm just going to pull them up here. All right. So uh, based on my total testosterone, I have a reading of 10.56 nanomoles per liter. The reference is 2.8 to 21.6 nanomoles per liter. Now, that's a reference from this test here. I'm going to go cross-reference that with some other figures that I found. One of them, I'm just, I'm using Wikipedia as like a point of reference. <laughs> I know that, uh, all the teachers out there are like, oh my God, you can't use Wikipedia. Okay, it's reference, but then I'm going to use another one as well. So if we're looking at total testosterone in adult males here uh, for 40 to 59, um, it should be uh, 12.15 to 30.88 nanomoles per liter. Huh. So I'm under. I'm under by a little bit. So I got low testosterone. Let's take a look at another one when it comes to... There's just another article here. What's the average testosterone level in men in their 40s? In the age group 40 to 44, men have an average testosterone levels of 597 nanograms per deciliter. So that's just a that, that's a non-standard uh, unit of measurement. So that would me- translate into uh, at 20.7 nanomoles per liter. Oh my god, I have low testosterone. <laughs> Shit. Oh, you heard it here first, which I find kind of surprising to be honest. Uh, with all the lifting I do, I eat well, I sleep well. Uh, so now I guess I got to have a conversation with my doc, right? Uh, this is something that uh, I'm concerned with out of all the things I got tested. This was the one that I was really concerned with. And it's, uh, it's confirming what I thought, um, just because of some things that I've been literally feeling within my body. Like I'm not healing as well. I know I'm getting older, but I also feel a little bit more sluggish. Even though I'm at the gym, even though I'm training jujitsu, I don't feel like I have the pop. I don't feel like I have the mental clarity focus that I used to. So is that a result of having lower than average testosterone? It very well could be. So that's why I'm suggesting you go out and do it. Even though if you think you feel good, uh, it could be a very important next step. Now, the other thing is veterans are definitely at risk of having lower testosterone levels than the general population as well. So the research is pretty clear on that. And what seems to be happening, and this is, I'm taking a stab at this. I don't know because I don't, the, the, the research isn't out, but I am going to uh, estimate that there is a significant proportion of those veterans or veterans like any one of us that have been diagnosed with something similar to PTSD, but it's actually low testosterone and if we've been misdiagnosed for years i think this is the time to start having that conversation with oh wait a second maybe all of this psychological work is not working because i have low testosterone and low testosterone levels leads to depression it is a symptom of low testosterone so I'm going to go get this uh, confirmed with the doc, see what the, my next steps are. I'm really interested to see where, where this would go. So uh, if it results in testosterone replacement therapy, I will be the first to uh, let you guys know that I'm on performance enhancing drugs. <laughs> okay, trust me. Uh, so if my next videos are me with like a Hulk-like physique, you know, 
you know, I'm not going to be hiding it. All right. And uh, I know some of you guys are definitely uh, prescribed already testosterone replacement therapy. And, and all of you that have uh, come through my doors and have interacted with me that have all said great things about it. So uh, let's see what the next steps are. Definitely considering it. And uh, I'll definitely be posting about it in the future. So more to follow. Stay tuned. Um, so that's it for me, folks. I am going to be uh, taking a little hiatus for the break right now. It's uh, the 22nd of December. So enjoy the time with your family. Happy Hanukkah to my Jewish bros and sisters out there. And don't forget to subscribe. Make sure you hit the bell if you're watching this on YouTube. And I'll see you on the next one. Train hard, fight easy. Merry Christmas. See you in the new year. Peace.